All right. Hi, guys. This is Mary Wong. Welcome to Fertility Talks. I'm your host, and I am the um, acupuncturist and your fertility strategist. I am uh, author of the best-selling book, Pathways to Pregnancy, and I am super, super thrilled tonight to have Dr. Rahi Victory all the way from Windsor, well, online, being here with us, and we're going to talk the ins and outs of IVF and fertility in of itself. So thank you, Dr. Rahi Victory, for being here tonight. Thanks for having me. It's an honor. Well, and I might add that you do work 24-7 because you're sitting here at 8.30 at night at your office. Uh, I finished, you know, like, it's awesome. It's like, gosh, you're like me. And, and I actually created time to race home so I can actually record this. So literally from the car to here in my seat right now to speak to you. And <laughs> <laughs> we have so many questions for you. And I know that you're really stellar at answering this because for those of you who do not know, Dr. Victory is on uh, social media. He's there always providing you the um, answers and uh, that you deserve with regards to all the questions that you may have. So uh, what is your Instagram? It is at rahivictory.md. So you need to check him out there. But in the meantime, thank you for being here. And we're going to ask you questions. But before we do so, I just want to share with everyone a little bit about who you are. Okay? Sure, absolutely. So Dr. Rahi Victory is a fully licensed and certified REI, so reproductive endocrinologist in Canada and the U.S., welcoming patients from all backgrounds to their state-of-the-art clinic. His passion for promoting productive, reproductive health is reflected by his deep commitment to educating and helping patients, active involvement in research, and for creating a multidisciplinary clinic environment, embracing holistic fertility care. And just so you might notice, I said fertility care rather than infertility care. <laughs> Okay, so welcome. And um, I think we need to get right in on this. I said, hey, Dr. Victory, what do you want to talk about? And it's like, well, let's talk about, you know, who should seek help when it comes to fertility. So I guess we'll just start with that. Yeah, sure. Um, so thank you again for having me on the show. It's a real pleasure and an honor. Um, and for the kind introduction. So yeah, we really want to help uh, pretty much anybody that is looking for assistance. You definitely get different categories of patients. And so we usually break it down into kind of definitions or groups. So if it is a woman and her periods are irregular, meaning they're less than 21 days or more than 35 days, and they're trying to conceive, we actually recommend those women get support quickly. And by quickly, I mean right away. So they should be reaching out because there can be health conditions that can contribute to that irregularity, which are important to deal with outside of fertility. They can represent risks for metabolic disorders, endometrial cancer or hyperplasia, diabetes, depression, anxiety. Or on the flip side, sometimes women are experiencing that irregularity because their ovaries are getting weaker at a more rapid pace than they should. So those patients really need to be seen. Uh, for everybody else that is regular, we usually break it down into age categories. So if you're under 35, if you've tried for about a year, then you know that's reasonable. And if you haven't conceived, then we should see you. The reason being that about 60% will conceive within about six months, 80% within about a year, and actually 90% within two years but because we want to capture that 10% that's still infertile after two years as quickly as we can, we tell them to try for a year and then, and then come in. If you're between 35 to 40, you should really come in after six months. And if you're over 40, really even after three months of trying, it's reasonable to seek help because the window of opportunity is getting shorter. The other sort of categories of patients are those who need fertility assistance because of their sexual orientation. So if you are in a homosexual male relationship, obviously you need a female as part of the process. And that can be either in the shape of getting eggs from someone and then using somebody else as a carrier or potentially using someone for both their eggs and as a carrier. Um, and, and of course, on the flip side, if you're in a same-sex female relationship, 
oftentimes they're going to need sperm donors if they don't have friends that are willing. And so again, those are individuals that don't really need fertility help, but they need assistance with their, their particular journey. So all of those patients kind of need to reach out to us sooner and, and we get the ball rolling for helping them out. And so part of the process, thank you for being very thorough with that answer. And I guess now it's like looking at, well then, and I get this all the time, actually, we'll say, Mary, who should I see? What clinic should I go to? What doctor is the best? Right? So how do you address that? Yeah, so I'm kind of picky. And I, I sort of always say that I'm a little bit different from other uh, specialists. So for me, it's really, really important to prioritize the patient and their needs and not my clinic or my needs or our, our sort of agenda. I find too often in the fertility world, it is really a big business and the medicine gets kind of lost in the shuffle and people are treated as, uh, you know, dollar signs realistically, instead of as, as patients needing help. So we very much focus on making sure that we first figure out what actually is going on for the patient. So we do extensive testing for every couple that comes in. We make sure we know everything we need to know about them before we even get to the stage where we recommend anything. Then we do an extensive review with the patient. And, and all too often, I'll get second opinion requests uh, and pa patients will come to us and say, you know, I went to see this other clinic and, you know, they told me I needed IVF and I'll say, well, why did they tell you you needed IVF? And the patients have absolutely no idea. And I, and then I, I follow it up and say, well, what did they tell you was wrong? I don't know. So I never want any of our patients to leave here saying, I don't know. I want our patients to leave saying, oh my God, he spent the time to explain it to us. We understand everything. He was very thorough and, and he really educated us. So we actually read out the numbers. I explain what every single test result means. I explain how it impacts their fertility. Um, we go through the holistic approach. So I talk to my patients about their social habits. We review their body mass index. We talk about vitamins, supplements, acupuncture. Uh, we talk about their psychological well-being. We have a very robust program here to address all of those things. So we work with a naturopath. We have a chiropractor nearby. Um, you know, we have traditional Chinese medicine specialists that we refer to in our local area. And, and obviously for our Toronto patients, we're probably going to hit up Mary. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we really try and work holistically because it, it does really take a, a team of people to make this work. And so we, we really focus on diagnosis, then we focus on education, and then we really focus on a, a team approach to getting patients to where they want to go. And I'm a big believer that fertility patients feel like they've lost control and we want to restore that control for them. So we always kind of talk to patients about options. And then I say, listen, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm going to give you your options, the risks and benefits. And then you kind of tell us what suits you the best. And we'll make that work for you, whatever that request is. Some people want IVF to be the last thing on their minds. Other people want it to be the first. To us, it makes no difference. We want to work with you or with the patient to make sure that we get the outcome that they're seeking their way. It's not what we want. It's what they want. You know, and this is so amazing that you're saying this and addressing this. And I love how you, you know, speak to the BMI right away and the dietary needs. And because, you know, it's the whole let's help the soil, let's help the seed before we even try to conceive. Absolutely. And so what I'm interested then is when you're saying extensive, extensive testing, what are you speaking to? And is this, do all clinics do this or is this specifically your clinic? Like what are these tests that you're are doing? Um, so I don't know. I can't speak about all clinics. I know from experience, some clinicians and clinics are kind of more quick to just kind of throw people into therapy. Uh, others take months of just doing natural cycle monitoring, which really isn't that helpful. And then other clinics are a bit more thorough. I can only speak to what we do. So we will extensively test the woman. We only do one month of cycle monitoring to see how her eggs are, how many does she have, are they growing well? What are her hormones like? Um, we do check AMH, we check vitamin D, we check ferritin levels for iron. 
Uh, so those are the sort of extras that we do on top of the normal things. Obviously, everybody's being checked for sexually transmitted diseases. And for those that need it, we also do carrier screening now where we check for single gene defects or, or what we call monogenic disorders where they might have cystic fibrosis or muscular dystrophy or some of these diseases that can really have an impact on the baby. Uh, but we never leave out the guys. So we also address checking the guys and we're doing an STD screen for them. We make all of our men do a semen analysis and more and more we're adopting the idea of doing the DNA fragmentation test for the men because it does have a very significant impact on some outcomes. And so we're starting to include that more and more. It used to be pretty expensive, but we brought it in house and we're doing it in, in house now and it's at least a little more reasonable. So I like that because if I can do something valuable at a low cost for the patients, that's something I can stand behind. And, and that's really what we're all about is not gouging people, but just you know charging the very least that we can to get a, a reasonable outcome for them. So we really extensively test the men. We extensively test the women. We do, again, take a very holistic approach to this. So I'll talk to them about seeing a naturopath or seeking out uh, you know, traditional Chinese medicine. We talk to them about acupuncture. We talk to them about their mental well-being. Uh, we really try and be very supportive. So we have an online program our patients can do for free. I actually pay for it so they can get access for free. We have a psychologist on staff. We have a social worker on staff. We have a family doc that does counseling. So it's a, a really robust program for us to offer our patients every kind of support that we can. We have a nutritionist. We even have an addiction specialist. So there's a lot of people in the team which are all willing to help kind of get, get people through what they need. That's really fantastic. And so when you say it's complimentary, is it because they are actually your patients or can anybody sign up for these kinds of programs? Um, I mean, I'm certainly happy to have anybody sign up for the programs without being our patient. All of the team members function independently, but we also work together when, that, mm -hmm. when needed. So these are independent physicians that are working through our clinic, but they have their own practices. So we don't restrict them from seeing anybody or helping anybody. Um, you do need to be a patient of ours to access our online program. It's called Organic Conceptions. It's a fantastic program from the U.S. from a couple that are you right. Sure it? Yeah, I know them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Great, great program. And what we did was um, they, they offer it as a per patient charge to the patients. And mm -hmm. what I said was, look, I'll just pay you a monthly fee and I want you to cover all of my patients and don't charge our patients. So yes. we took on the burden of the cost, but now I get to offer it to all of our patients and patients really take to it. They can do it from the privacy of their home. It's really comfortable. So um, I think that has a lot of benefits. Absolutely. Thank you so much for saying that. Oh, boy. So now some of the Toronto people are going to say, oh, Dr. Victory also comes to Toronto. So I'm going to check him out. So you can check him out now. And so then let's, um, let's cover some of the myths now. What are, what is some of the biggest myths that you have about fertility or infertility? Oh, there's lots. So probably the biggest ones that are concerns for me, I always need to dispel is that number one is that, you know, I'm never going to get pregnant. It's actually quite rare for someone to not be able to get pregnant. So a lot of women come in, a lot of men as well, very anxious, very disturbed by the fact that it's taken them a while and they've really lost hope. But uh, in our experience, it's actually quite rare that we can't help someone conceive. Now, sometimes it takes a lot of effort. Sometimes you need advanced therapy. Sometimes it's quite simple, but virtually everyone we can eventually succeed with. So the biggest myth we deal with is just telling people you're actually going to be okay because they're so worried when they come in that it's not going to work, that we really need to spend time re you know, reassuring them and giving them hope again. Uh, the second biggest myth is that everybody needs IVF. So the majority of patients don't need IVF. And, and I, look, I love doing IVF and we're really good at it, but it's not needed for a lot of patients. Sometimes they just need to have, you know, acupuncture or they just need to, to de-stress or detox. Um, sometimes they need the right vitamins. Sometimes they need to uh, you know, get their tubes cleaned or be on some medication to help them ovulate. So not every patient needs to be thrown into what I call the IVF grinder, where 
you know, they get thrown in and churn through it. And sometimes it works. And when it doesn't work, the immediate response is, oh, we'll just do it again. I mean, people put their lives on hold for this. They put their emotions and their finances into it. And it is really a very heavy burden on all fronts. Yes. So while I am a, a big proponent of IVF, I never tell everybody that they need to do it. And in fact, we try as much as possible to avoid it for our patients unless it's necessary. We try the simple stuff if they're game and, and then try the more advanced stuff when we need to. So that's probably the other biggest myth is just that a lot of patients feel like they show up and they're immediately told, well, you need to do IVF. Well, the truth is most patients don't need to do IVF. There's lots of options and they need to be told they have options. And, you know, I really want to thank you for saying this because I find too that women, when they are not seeing the results, meaning baby in the belly, then they'll, you know, level up on the amount of technology that they add into the equation, right? In ART. So, and then there's the greater the technology, the higher the expectation and the more emotional involvement. And, and it's just, it just snowballs into this crazy amount of stress and it just escalates more and more. And when, by the time you hit IVF, there's such a great expectation. Well, surely this now has to work. And as you and I know, it's not necessarily so. Right, right. That's very, very true. It's a great point. And, and thanks for pointing that out. Uh, we, we really do spend a lot of time trying to walk patients through the proce process. I really kind of hold their hands literally and figuratively. I'm known for holding patients' hands as they go to sleep. So, uh, you know, <laughs> we walk patients through their journey from step one to, you know, the final step and make sure they understand the ups and downs. It's, uh, we just did a video called Embryo Math that we posted on YouTube. And the video actually very much goes into the details of what you should expect from IVF because all too often, it's just like, oh, you need IVF and you're going to be fine. And the reality is people go into it with that anticipation and don't realize that, that their chances are low. There was a great study from Israel released uh, just about two months ago where they had women that were a little bit older who had gone through an IVF clinic and were told that their chances were 5%. And they quizzed them when they were leaving the clinic and said, what do you think your chances are? And the average rate was 49.3%. So they- Even though the doctor tells them that it's 5%. Right. So they- Very interesting. Five, but what they left with in their minds was 50. And, and, you know, I don't want anyone to come back and say to me, well, you didn't tell me. I want to be very honest with them and make sure our patients understand that if I'm telling them it's 5%, it's actually 5%, right? So, yeah. so we spend a lot of time to make sure our patients are educated. That's critical. Absolutely. And, and educating in an empowering way versus, um, what's the word? Just, just to have them know that, you know, it's not the end all be all and yet that there are options. And I, I look at it as cre creative management, right? Like how do we creatively handle this and, and looking beyond just one specific thing. And I, you know, you mentioned it earlier and I say this all the time. It's like, truly, you know, they say it takes a community or a village to raise a child, but it's the same village that needs to create this child. So. It is. That's a, a you know, I, I think about it in that exact same sense. So you're right. And that's why we really have this holistic team approach, just riding in there and saying, I'm Dr. Victory, we're going to do this. It just puts people off and, and they don't have the confidence they do when you tell them, look, I've got a whole team of people here to help you. Yeah. And I'm going to go off tangent for one second, because yeah. This is how I feel that is uh, it's being sold like this for egg freezing. And I like, I cringe because I think women that are younger, they, or not even younger, they're like 37, 38, 39, 40, and they're single. And they're like, oh my God, I better freeze my eggs. And then they think that's a guarantee. And I'm like, Ooh, no, like you really need to be informed. Yeah, I, I agree. I actually, I had a great phone call with a patient that had done egg freezing with a clinic in Toronto. She was, uh, I think, 42, and she had managed to collect, I think, six eggs. And, at, and I mean, at 42, you need like 60. Yeah. So, you know, get, getting six is not even close. And they, they, I, when I told her this, she goes, well, no one told me that. So, yeah. you know, you need to be educated as a physician, but you also need to educate as a physician. And, and that's so critical. And 
unfortunately, in a lot of places, the money gets involved and there's this big push to, to drive income. And to be honest with you, I couldn't care less about the money. I just want to help people. So for us, it's a different, a different program and a different message. So, and I love that you say that. So when you say this, then does it always have to cost so much? And actually for those that do not know and that have not pursued IVF, how much is an average round of IVF? Yeah. So, you know, um, what we did in our program was take out the nickel and diming of everything. And we just came up with a, a package price. So everybody just pays one lump sum and it includes everything. So a, a garden variety IVF package with us is $99.95. So $9,995. That includes everything except the medication. And for those that need genetic testing, that's a separate issue. But it includes your monitoring, your investigations, your, uh, your IVF cycle, doing the egg retrieval, making embryos with ICSI, um, growing them out to blastocyst, hatching them, your first transfer, and even freezing all of the remaining embryos for a year. Um, does it have to cost that much? It actually doesn't. So, so we do a lot of natural cycle IVF, where we just go for one egg and we turn it into an embryo works very, very well for women that have weaker ovaries. And we've had a tremendous amount of success with that. So that's much cheaper. It's only $6,000. So you Absolutely. can it a lot. Um, so what is weaker? I'm going to just cut in for one yeah. minute, if you don't mind. What, what do you call, or how do you define weak ovaries? Well, it depends. I don't use one criterion. So there's a number that we can use. So uh, I'll include as part of the sort of diagnosis, their response from previous cycles, if they've done those. We look at their AMH level, we'll look at their FSH level, we check their antral follicle count. So we really kind of have a holistic approach to it. Uh, we get lots of people that have low AMH, but can make you know a reasonable number of eggs. So I'll never tell someone, oh, your AMH is low, you're gonna do terribly. We really look at the whole picture of the patient and then see how we can do with the different options that are available. Right. Okay. So then I'm going to jump into something even more specific now, sure. like, um, and, and people ask all the time, maybe for you as well. So um, in the luteal phase, so after ovulation, whether you're doing it naturally or IUI or IVF, mm -hmm. there's differences in progesterone that people are taking, right. In right. terms of delivery. So for example, people will say, gosh, Mary, and in fact, I was one of these people. Um, I've done multiple rounds of IVF. I'll give you my book, by the way. Okay, sure. <laughs> it, has my, it has my story in it as well. But um, in the oftentimes, it's progesterone in oil that is basically the um, golden standard for IVF, it seems, right? Yeah. And it's, is it like, does it have to be that? Can it be suppository? Um, you know, what are your thoughts? So um, I, I try and base as many of my thoughts off of current research as possible. So there is reasonably good data that suggests that the progesterone in oil is the best way to go. But I wouldn't say that that's true for everybody. So there are people that react with like a big pink welt um, when they do the progesterone in oil. And those patients do terribly, A, because it's painful and stressful for them, and B, because you're really engaging their immune system. And if you overact or overreact the immune system, um, you're gonna kill off any embryos you put anywhere. So uh, we really try and be very patient specific. I, I always tell people we're not you know, doing cookie cutter medicine with infertility. We're making babies, not cookies. So. You know, I never do the same thing for everybody. We really try and custom tailor it to each patient. But we here use a combination of vaginal progesterone and we use the progesterone in oil together. And we actually monitor the progesterone levels when we're doing IVF to make sure it's perfect. So mm -hmm. we're very, very vigilant about that. And uh, so far for us, it's worked really very, very, very well. Um, our success rates are phenomenal and, and much higher than the average. So for us, it's worked. I, I don't want to tell anybody that they should all do the same thing because I think you need to individualize, but um, our, our program has been really tremendously successful. So we're happy with what we're seeing. I like it that you said to individualize because certainly every woman does respond differently. So for myself, I, I called it like, oh my gosh, I had elephantitis on my butt. 
because I had these giant welts on both sides um, from the injectable. And, And I think it also depends on the carrier oil because there's different carrier oils that are utilized, Mm -hmm. right? So I think for some of them, they were fine. And I think the ethanol based one, that was the one that killed me. And I literally had welts for a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah, And you can't use that. I mean, if you're reacting like that, you have to stop immediately because those patients just don't do well. Yeah. So um, obviously it didn't. And, uh, it was, and in the end, I just begged and I said, you know what, I can't, I can't do the oils like you just have. And so we just went straight up suppository and that's my baby now. Right. So (laughs) (laughs) So, so it is no real one right way, but certainly one right way for you. Yeah. Yeah. And we really very much focus on making it patient specific. So, you know, we have our general approach, but I ask the patient what their feeling is, what their experience in the past is. And, uh, and we, we, in many instances, try test doses of the progesterones to see how the patient will react because probably 15 or 20% have those big pink welts and you don't want the welts. If you see the welts, those patients just, they never have a good outcome. Mm. we we desperately try to avoid those that's really interesting that you say that because certainly i've witnessed and myself included um it's kind of like let's persevere let's give you some prednisone let's take some benadryl and it's like really like you're just stacking up things and i just don't know how well that does you're laughing what are you thinking when i say this no I, i agree i think that's foolish i mean you know if someone's getting the welts the the plan is not to give them Benadryl and prednisone is to stop giving them wealth. So yeah, I don't, (laughs) I don't, I don't push things on patients. I think patients have to be very comfortable with what they're doing. And I don't just mean that physically. I mean that mentally and emotionally, they have to be on board with the plan. Stress can reduce your success by up to 60%. So if you don't have a holistic approach for your patient, you're just not going to get the same outcomes. Love it. Thank you so much for that. That is so insightful. And again, I really want to applaud you for looking at things holistically, because certainly I find that with doctors, they they may have it in their back of their minds, but when you're faced with a patient, you just kind of go straight towards the toolbox and then you forget about the other pieces. And it sounds like you really kind of pull everything together. So thank you for that. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, we certainly try. <laughs> so is any is there any last words of wisdom that you want to impart? You know, I, I think patients really need to to find a center that they feel comfortable working with. And and I never tell everybody they have to come to me because there's lots of great doctors out there. But I think it's important for patients that are starting off this journey to find a center that they trust, uh, find a center that's not looking to just push them into one treatment or another. It should never be about you know, how much money you represent to that clinic. It should be about what can that clinic do for you, not what you're going to be doing for the clinic. Um, and, and there are some of the doctors that represent that. And I encourage the patients to find a, a place they feel comfortable with where there is a team approach and they embrace a holistic approach to this. And they, they're open to what the patients want. Absolutely. I think when the patient gets the highest level of satisfaction, out of the process, they also get the highest level of success. So that's really where the focus should be. And and I hope more fertility centers embrace that. Um, You know, for now, there's, there's a few. And so I hope that grows over time, because that's really what we want to see. So, you know, for me, I'm, I'm in a bunch of different communities. I'm in Toronto, I'm in Windsor, I'm in Sarnia, we're opening other clinics, and we really want to kind of spread that message to the patients. I love it. So thank you for being here again, taking the time out at the end of your busy day. Hopefully you're actually done work now and, and, and that this actually is not work. This is just for fun and, you know, (laughs) imparting your wisdom to others that will benefit. Um, Just again, for those that are just tuning in, Dr. Rahi Victory is here and um, you can find him on at rahivictory.md on instagram and he has a is your youtube channel called the same thing it's uh, just dr victory dr victory okay there you go that's very yeah. easy so yeah i'll i'll go on yours Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we'll get you on. We'll yeah for sure and yeah. um for this weekend um there is the canadian fertility show it's the fourth annual for those of you that are interested it's only i think 15 dollars 
I'm speaking as one of the speakers and I am covering um, the what, how, when, and why to do acupuncture for, for your fertility journey. Oh, and yeah, so it'll be great. I have a booth there. So come on over and ask us any old question. And um, I believe, which is so cool, you know, there are benefits to things, doing things virtually because it has always been a live show. And because it's virtual, you actually get access to all the lectures for 40, 30 days. And it's only 15 bucks. Whereas when you go live, you have to choose between three lecture halls, which one am I going to go see, right? right. So you, you, in fact, benefit more. So go check it out. And it's the Canadian Fertility Show 2021. So Amazing. hope to see you all there and hope to see you there, Dr. Victory. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Okay, and we'll have you on again because, you know, you're great to listen to. You're highly informative and um, I'll you know, definitely check out your all your uh, social media outlets with all your information. Actually, one thing before we go, I love this yeah. one post that you did and it was a picture of fibroids that you had removed. Yeah. And, and, and stating a fact that, you know, sometimes like everybody's just so focused on IVF, but, you know, let's look at also the state of the uterus and perhaps the right. misshapen uterus could be an impediment to receptivity. So it's like, how great is that? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We, we try and, like I said, optimize everything for the patient's journey. So um, if I'm going to do something for a patient, I'm going to make sure that it's going to have the highest possible success. And uh, surgery is often part of that process. And all too often it goes ignored because of concerns that the patient will go somewhere else or, you know, they'll go somewhere else, which doesn't tell them to do the surgery. But for me, uh, I'm not going to put people through treatment unless I am giving them the best chance I possibly can. So if I have to operate first, I operate and I do all of my own surgeries. In fact, I was in the OR all day today. So, uh, you know, I like doing that because when I'm operating, I have the fertility specialist mindset. So I'm preserving the ovary. I'm preserving the uterus. I'm avoiding adhesions. Um, yes. we're doing everything we can to make sure we're maximizing that fertility potential. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely, you know, more grounds for other posts because certainly I've seen people then who are left with adhesion post-surgically and that can cause impediments, right? Oh, so sure. yeah. anyway, we're, we've gone beyond the time and uh, we'll definitely have to have you back. So thank you once again. So again, okay. this is Dr. Rahi Victory dot MD right. on Instagram. Okay. See you guys thank later you. until then. Take Bye. care. Have a good day.